for joining me today on my YouTube channel. I'm your girl, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist, and I'm wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. Guys, I am really excited about just, you know, this whole process of forgiveness and us really breaking this down and being honest about, you know, what it's like for us. Um, I would encourage you guys. I, it's a labor of love. I did my ebook myself, y'all. Took a lot of time. I prayed throughout the whole thing. I really wanted to give y'all something nice and I wanted to double the size of the last ebook I gave you last month. And of course, you know, in March, I'm going to give you another one. I'm excited about that one too. I'll drop the name of that one pretty soon because I was going to do all it takes is one move from God, but I'm going to push that one back to the summer. But there's another topic that God wants me to address. And if you have some topics you want me to address and do a series and do a book, please drop it in the comments if it's something else you want me to talk about too. I'm open to that. Um, so yes, you can go to imwiredtoinspire.com and you can get yesterday's episode of the, excuse me, the forgiveness series. And you can also get a copy of the ebook. If not, you could just hit the description right below. Press pause right now. If you don't have it, I would download it, then open it back up. And I want you to follow through with me in today's um, episode. So guys, I would like to just give a disclaimer. I normally do not have to do this, but I need to give a trigger warning and I'm going to, you, you saw it big letters in the, in the top, there is a trigger warning. Okay. So I do not want anyone to listen to this and not know you have to listen responsibly. And I don't want you to listen. If you are in a space where you might be triggered and spiraled, that is not what this is about, but I have to honor what I promised y'all. Okay. I'm not on here just to do kicks and giggles. Y'all know I'm a clown and I, I say what I say, but my heart is really to serve people. And if I'm called to help people live their authentic purpose, and if this is the way God is calling me to do it right now, and I have to do that. So I'm just a wee bit emotional because I know personally, so many people who are stuck and dealing with what we're going to talk about today, myself included, I've had uh, an experience in one of these areas. You know, typically it is it is very hard to cope and express these things in a way that you feel like you're helping somebody. Because you know once you talk about these things and you pull up these old wounds it can really cause people to spiral. But what we know about the word of God and what we know about the beauty and promise of God is that what's done in the dark will come to light. And God wants to take everything that was meant to make you stay in the darkness and stay in unforgiveness. And, you know, he wants you to get out of that so that you can move into the light. What I have learned on this journey is that when you go through these forms of unforgiveness due to abuse-based situations, you have some type of abuser who's done something to you to violate you in some way, it is a very, very, it could be very traumatic and even a tragic feeling because you literally feel duped and you literally feel like, you know, what, what's going on? Like, I, this is a whole lot for me what's going on. So, um, like I said, we're going to be addressing abuse. Now you would know personally what form of abuse this is or what, what the root of your unforgiveness is, but we know that the topic in particular is abuse. So it could be sexual, physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, Okay, even financial, even financial, because some people have been hoodwinked out of their money. They have been, uh, they hit rock bottom. 
because somebody abused their finances or they were in a situation where they trusted somebody with money and then they found out, wow, like, you know, again, you might have put yourself in a situation where you were really trying to come up and do right and they abused your finances. You know, so this is a very heavy space right here, but we have to we have to address it, y'all. Let's get healthy. Let's get whole. Let's get this thing going because God wants you to persevere and God wants you to shine. He wants you to soar. So again, trigger warning. I'm about to jump in. One last reminder, please go download the ebook now and you can jump in on page four and then we're going to get started. So check it. So on page four of the ebook, I break down the four different types of forgiveness I am addressing, right? So on this page, it's called the audacity of forgiveness. And it says, which types, which type or types do you identify with? Okay. So what happens with unforgiveness, y'all, we can experience unforgiveness in multiple areas at areas at one time. So for instance, you could, you could still be having unforgiveness towards somebody at your old job. Because they took away your control and then it changed your, your pay cut. I mean, then you got a pay cut. And now, even though you moved on, you still cannot forgive them for doing that to you. You just can't because they their behavior affected your control. Meanwhile, while you got that going on in one compartment of your brain, you're still holding on to when you, you know, you finally found a church home and these people said that they were one way and they completely started spiritually abusing you, right? And that could be something you're holding on to while you're holding on to the control unforgiveness. And then you could also be holding on to another form of abuse because maybe somebody violated you when you were, you know, a kid or, you know, you had a terrible experience where somebody, you know, genuinely just completely tried to manipulate you and they abused you and you trusted them. So that's why I say which types. Because some of you could be literally dealing with, some of you could be harboring unforgiveness in four different ways with four different people, with four different situations. And this is why it was so important for me to take my time and break this down because I want to give you guys value. I want you to be transformed by this stuff because it's really important for you to understand. It doesn't take a whole lot of bells and whistles. It just takes a commitment to saying, I will not let someone else dictate my life and ruin who God has called me to be. It's just simple as that. Once you make that decision and decide that that's what you want it to be for you, then God is going to open up the gates of heaven via a YouTube video, via somebody saying, hey, I'm going to offer you some therapy, whatever. God is going to open up those gates so that you can get that knowledge and wisdom and understanding so that you can be healed and whole and you can get into the space that he wants you to be in. So let's get started. So when it comes to abuse... Here is the, the statement that I made about abuse, okay? It says, I was violated. They did something to me that took away my innocence and sense of self. I feel like this has shifted me and or has possibly ruined my life and I didn't deserve it. So that's why I'm saying this can really go from anywhere from spiritual abuse to sexual to financial. You know, somebody can financially or spiritually abuse you and you can literally feel like you've lost your sense of self. It, it could literally affect you in such a negative way. You begin to question your whole life. When someone sexually assaults you or abuses you, you could literally, you can literally sit there and say, oh my God, like, what did I do to deserve this? And what happens is it causes a situation where you begin to question your life while you're here and what you're doing. And it's not something that you know you set yourself up for. It just happened to you, Right. If you listen to the video yesterday, when I talk about your lot, your lot, L-O-T, your lot in life, there's some things that we experience that we can't control, but it's our lot in life. And I, I tend to believe whatever our lot, quote unquote, L-O-T, our lot in life is, that is where God is going to get the most glory. I kind of feel like that's almost like how he does with our families. We can't pick our bloodline. We, that's, we can pick our partners who we create a bloodline with, but we can't, we can't pick the people that's going to come out as a result of those unions. Right? So I think it's just really important to understand that 
Although this can feel very hard to hear and it can frustrate you and bring up old things, I need you to start fighting and pushing through when it gets really tough. When you, If you start to think about the incident or you start to get, you know, you start to spiral. I need you to, I need you to just hear me out and let's let the Holy Spirit move. So we're going to pray real quick. So Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We honor you, Lord. We ask the forgiveness of our sins so that our prayers may reach you purely and directly from our hearts. I ask that you cover all of the listeners. I thank you, God, for the friends, the foes, the haters, and the lovers. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for who's ever here ear hustling on behalf of the enemy. I pray that they get blessed and whatever the negative intent was hearing this, it now backfires and now they are operating in excellence according to what you say we should be doing as children of God and no longer them working for the enemy as one of his minions. I thank you for those who are genuinely trying to uncover everything that's keeping them in a state of unforgiveness. I thank you that those who have been violated by today's topic, which is the topic of abuse, they can literally pinpoint and name an abuser in spiritual, mental, physical, emotional, and financial ways. Any of those ways they can identify and they are struggling with their life at this point as a result of these violations, that sense of self, perhaps taken innocence, anything in that capacity, Lord, we thank you that you are going to show up and show out. You will cover them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. And our prayer is that there's a breaker anointing on this word and whomever is most in need of this blessing of healing they will receive it in Jesus name. We pray. Amen. 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 So guys, if you go to page five, okay, this is what it reads. When you experience abuse based on forgiveness, these are some, but not all of the seeds the enemy may try to plant. And I'm going to tell you what happens. So usually we, excuse me, usually when we are violated by an abuser of some kind, this is what that abuser could possibly have connected to that situation in the violation that is dropped off with you. And long after the abuse has happened, you could begin to struggle with these things and you might be in therapy. You might be crying. You don't know why you picking up these bad relationships. You don't know why any of this stuff is going on. But what you didn't realize was the enemy knew who you were. That piece of trash knows that you are chosen, gifted, and incredible. But that dummy went and violated you in an attempt to destroy who you are. Okay? Now, let me give you a list of some, not all. This is just a few of them. But these are the ones in my studying and praying and doing some actual talking to other human beings about what they've experienced. This is what I find most of them leave you with and that they have in common. And what I found extremely jarring was that people who experienced a sexual abuser and a person who may have spirit uh, ex uh, experienced an emotional abuser or, or spiritual abuser, they had the same traits that ended up, you know, overtaking their lives after this violation after this abuse. So I guess what I'm saying to you guys is abuse is abuse. And I do believe, I do believe that there are levels and I do believe that there are violations that no one can dictate if something is worse off or better than something else. But I do believe this when innocence is taken, when people are taken for granted, when they're lied to, when people are made to feel foolish, when, when people are made to feel like they're an imbecile, when they are made to feel like they're they are uh, they just gullible and they can fall for anything, that can be very disastrous for people because it is very hard when you go into something with your right mind and something comes out of nowhere and abuses you, or something comes out of nowhere and looks at you and takes your kind of kindness for weakness. And what what happens? What starts off as something that could potentially be great, it turns out to be one of the worst things you've ever experienced. And that's why I said, oh my God, this is something that I know if we really could talk about this and we stop running from the pain it's causing and we stop looking at the actual abuser and we have to look at what the abuser's, abuser's job was. And we have to see if 
if them violating you in whatever way they did it, if you picked up any of these things that that action has left um, behind, if you picked up any of, the, any of the things that was left behind as a result, the whole point of this is that we got to bust them up and get rid of them. That's the whole point of it. And, and the enemy never wants us to get there. I told y'all it was hard as hell for me to get these videos out. You know, I mean, literally, I, and I meant what I said hard as hell because hell is a hard place, baby. Okay. It sure is no heaven. And I felt like the opposition that people put themselves in when they get in hellish situations, it is, it was like, yo, like, why isn't this thing that letting me record to get this message out? Because I knew it was loaded with healing. I knew it was loaded with, uh, with transformational information to really help people expand and grow and move into the next season and phase of their lives and to really begin to blossom. So here are about, I would say, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, about maybe 15 or 16 things that you might be dealing with. So now I want you to start paying attention up in this, this little spot right here. As I call these out, I want you to make sure that you sit with yourself a second to see if you struggle with any of these. And I'm going to give you a disclaimer. There are going to be a couple of these things that I say. And before you rush to judgment and say, oh, no, no, I need you to just make sure you are thinking about these things by definition. So I'm going to give you an example. The first one is low self-worth. Second one is low self-esteem. If your response is, oh, no, I'm confident. I ain't got to worry about that. That's probably a red flag. I'm about to get deep. So buckle your seatbelt. These are the type of things that the enemy loves because he will say, you are not struggling with this or you are not struggling with that. When in all actuality, you are absolutely dealing with that residue from that, but you're calling it the wrong thing. And you don't understand why if you have a super high, you think you have super high confidence and you're looking the part, but for some reason, you know, the execution is off. You know what I'm saying? Like there, there's some stuff that um, you really need to consider in this space right here. So if I say low self-worth and low self-esteem, look into that. Don't jump to, oh, I have confidence. That's not the same thing, y'all. Let me help y'all out. There's a very big difference between these two and three. Okay. That's why I don't have on the abuse line, lack of confidence because it's deeper than lack of confidence. You can build your confidence up. Honestly, I can tell you a quick pro tip. You know, I'm just throw this one at you. If you ever having confidence issues, the best way to build your confidence is preparation. That's an easy fix. You don't, confidence is not a thing. Confidence can be fleeting is what I'm saying. Confidence can come and go. But when you are dealing with your self-worth and your self-esteem, these are like foundational things that you need. Your confidence can be flip-floppy. That's just what it is. So I don't want you to just automatically go to your default space of saying, oh yeah, you know, I'm confident. No, 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 no. Because if you were confident, that's fine. But you can be confident in theory, but your life and the people you have around you are reflective of low self-worth and low self-esteem versus a person who's actually confident. And I'll tell y'all something else that gets people in a trick bag, okay? Tell you something else that get people in a trick bag that they don't realize. A lot of times when people are under the guise of having a particular trait and they think that they're doing something a certain way, they could literally be doing the exact opposite. But because of these things, these, these types of residue that the enemy leaves, he will literally have you orchestrate friend groups and you, you're literally what they call trauma bonding. Like you begin to have people in your life who keep you at a mediocre level. But you go through these highs and lows with them and it makes you think that these are your people because you get that. But you also don't understand that that is also an attack of the enemy. And most people who experience the trauma bonding friendships are people who naturally need a sense of community. So the enemy knows you well, my friend. The enemy will have you caught up in something for years Okay. And you over here thinking that it's one thing and it's completely something else. Okay. Y'all, we getting to it today. So here we go. 
If you have abused, excuse me, abuse based unforgiveness, here are some of the causes. As a result of this abuse, you could be experiencing low self worth, low sense of low self esteem, settling, hopelessness, bouts of anger, promiscuity, detachment, addiction, confusion, depression, anxiety, procrastination, suicidal thoughts, and stagnation. If you are dealing with any one of those things and you know you are also suffering with unforgiveness of the person who caused you to be violated, the person who abused you, this is the Holy Spirit coming through loud on a megaphone. Today is going to be the day you address it and get rid of it. Now, it might not go away immediately, but it's going to go away eventually because it's a lot harder to zero in on what the problem is and the issue is when you don't even recognize that there is one. Okay? So check this out. The mission, there's a mission. Because we know, we talked about it yesterday. The, 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 the enemy has a three-part agenda here. It's to kill, steal, and destroy. That is what he does. Okay? So his mission was to deflate you and to ruin you. He wanted to send that person to come and abuse your finances and mess you up because he wanted to deflate you more than likely. If you had money and you, you know, let's just say in general, you worked for it and it wasn't necessarily an inheritance. It could be an inheritance too, but you end up finding out that you wake up every day. Like my God, I went from having everything I needed but because I foolishly, again, quote unquote, you're thinking you're, you're foolish now. Watch what I'm doing there. You start adding these really disrespectful adjectives to yourself for something that you didn't see coming. And I think the hardest part, it goes back to that question I said on the, the list of 15 questions that you got to go in and download to read for yourself. But that big one that sticks out, do, do I feel stupid? Because these are the type of feelings that you have after someone does abuse based unforgiving things to you. When an abuser comes to you, the attempt is to make you think that you are not fearfully and wonderfully made. That is the mission. Okay. Right. So the list that I just said, it attempts to curse you. All of those things are attempted to curse you because you do understand if you have all these things and you don't want to talk about it and you just want to be unforgiving and you just want to hate them and not want to be bothered with them. Guess what? Those things can become you. Those things can get caught up in your bloodline. And let me be very clear with you. Okay. They violated you. Okay. This is not about them. They are trash or the spirit in them is trash for sure. Okay, no way you don't bow down. There is nothing you do not. You are not obligated to be somebody's friend and want to be whatever. No, God told you one thing that he said very clear. He said, you just forgive them because if you don't forgive them, I don't forgive you. That's what we focusing on today, baby. And our anchor scripture for abuse is Isaiah 5 and 20. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Okay. That is the anchor scripture because God is going to deal with your abuser. So woe to them. No, I am not telling you forgiveness, especially from the place of abuse is something that you just hear. And some, you just going to hear some girl on the internet talking about, Oh no, leave them alone. Forgive them. No way. We're not talking about that. What we're talking about is I want you to hear me out and understand what happens every day you give that joker your power. They already stole it and snatched it and it wasn't theirs to begin with. But now the ball is back in your court. I am getting chills. You have to snatch it back. You got to do what you need to do for you. Do they deserve to be dealt with? Absolutely. Right? Right? And wait till we get to the prayer because the prayer going to seal the deal. I think in the prayer, I cover all the bases. If I miss anything, let me know. But I really believe 
that once we read this prayer, that could at least begin the journey to healing and understanding from a wider scope how valuable you are. Each and every one of these forms of unforgiveness is designed to devalue you, even when it's ego driven, even when it's miscommunication, even, even when it's about control, the mission is to destroy you. That is the mission, right? That is the mission. Okay. So my question to you is, do you struggle with any of these right now? Or maybe some others that I didn't mention. Do you struggle with low self-worth and low self-esteem? And I and I and for some reason, the Holy Spirit is making me to keep repeating those because what's happening is some of y'all are around people right now and you look at them and you think, oh, he's so fine. He be handling his business. Oh, she's so pretty. And those people are really hurting. They're giving the appearance of being okay, but they're actually not. So I think, I think it's important for you to catch that right now because, um, God is speaking right there in that space. And I know that, you know, that when, when people are off, often sexually traumatized, it may come out in the form of them being promiscuous. It may come out in the form of depression and high level anxiety and fe feeling suicidal, often feeling detached from reality because you can't get your innocence back. And I am not saying by any means that that is okay. But what is not okay is for you to think that that is your fault. And what's also not okay is for you to think that that is the essence of your life. Okay. That idiot genuinely tried to take you out. And even if it wasn't physically what they tried to in your physical body. They wanted to catch your soul. They wanted to catch your spirit. When somebody. When somebody's mission. Is to kill your spirit. When they're on a demonic mission. To snatch that from you. They want nothing more. But for you to. To. Feel the remnants of whatever happened. Long after they're gone. Because that is a spirit that is demonic and it has its mission. It is always going to focus on its mission. And I am here as a person who really cares to serve the people of God and to help them to see that we're all healing. We're all coming out, including myself. It is just my a part of my calling to do it in this capacity. I'm not the only person with this capability. We all have it. We all have it. But today I need you to understand something. If you if you've been crying going back and forth and you've been so depressed, you could be 40 years old, but you keep thinking about what somebody did you when you were 12. This is a sign and confirmation that you are going to be healed from it. Remember, we are not going to give that joker no more nothing. This is not about the abuser. This is about you. This is about you. I know you deserve justice. I know you deserve restitution. That's not what we're talking about. We are talking about how you are incredible. We're talking about how you are so incredibly dope that God took time to give you your own fingerprints, your own body type, your own personality, your own everything. Okay. And if for those of you who have felt this abuse in these different situations from family and adults and loved ones who you never thought would do you that and they violated you, this is especially for you. Because what you have to understand is this, there is something so powerful about your life that is going to shift this world, affect nations. That's prophetic. I didn't even have that written. That is coming up now. And the enemy knows if he could get you to believe that what happened to you was unforgivable, then that means he will make sure that the world knows that you're forgettable. And we know all of that is lies. None of that is true. So sometimes it has to be said loud and clear and it has to be addressed in such a way that you look at it differently. You have to look at it differently because guess what? Some of you, when that person messed over you, you were in a relationship with that, with that woman and she emotionally and mentally abused you. 
when you were 25 and now you're 35 and you don't know why you can't keep a good relationship because something in you still may not be forgiving her. You know, you are the person who you saved up all your money. You made your first big investment. You felt proud of yourself. And guess what? You made your investment and you lost a ton of money. And now when you think about your financial abuser, you are so tight and stingy with money and you have no desire to help people anymore. And guess what? That is where you're going to get your blessings. You might convince yourself and think, oh, well, I'm not helping people no more because that's not it. Sweetheart, let me tell you something. If you are a helper, you are a helper. And you can't craft and concoct how you're going to do that because you are meant to be a helper. But because of the pain, because of the violation, and because, let me tell you something else. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Y'all, sometimes God could give us a trait and something that we're excellent at and something like, let's just say you have a helping spirit and God gives you the ability to help people it could, you, this might just be the way you are. Your family is, you got, you you know, it came down the bloodline. You're just a helpful person, right? Sometimes when you help the wrong people because you're helping them because you want to, when the people come along that God, God wants you to help, you don't even want to help them, you know, because it's like, it was all done from your flesh. This is what the enemy does y'all. When the enemy sends an abuser, he will then try to make you get off course. What an abuser can do sometimes, if you are a natural helper by nature and this person came and abused your ability to help, guess what's going to happen? When an opportunity comes up that God sends for you to help somebody, you're going to immediately vill villainize them. You're going to throw them in a bucket with everybody else. When God is like, hold up, hold up, hold up. I intended for you to help this person, not them other 30 people. And now when I really need you to help people and do what I need you to do, you don't want to do it because when that person came along and they violated you and they abused you, they left a stink. They left that thing sitting there with some bad residue. And now you out here thinking that, you know, this ain't nothing I need to do no more. I ain't with this no more. And that's just not how God does things y'all. That's why we have to bust this thing up and we have to pay attention to the beautiful traits about us. How many of y'all listening to me right now, knowing that it's something that you used to do. And then once you encountered this abusive situation, you don't even want to do it anymore. How many of you were, you know, it could have been somebody who, you know, you might've wrote people cards and wrote people letters and stuff all the time. I know they're not into that now, but y'all, I'm just making this up. And then the abuser came and every time you gave them a card, they ripped it up and tore it up. And now here you are years later and you're in a situation where somebody, they would love for you to write them cards and letters, but you don't want to do it because you still hold enough forgiveness from that person. And that's who you are. You are the person who you're, you're wired to do that. Just like I'm wired to inspire. You could be wired to do that too. Right? So you have to pay attention to the gravity of this thing because the enemy wants to destroy you and make you not be who you are. He will try to do that at every single turn. And that's why I want you to sit and be honest with yourself about the misuse of who God called you to be. This person intent, intentions were to misuse you, hence abuse you, and make you get real sketchy about the things that God has for you. Now, let me tell you the beautiful thing about what we're embarking on right now. I had to be very clear. And when you go down to page six, there was a beautiful photo of the, of somebody wearing armor, full armor from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. And I called that page, how God handles your abuser. It was so important that I put y'all some words on here, some scriptures, some things to stand on so that you can understand that when God says, I got you, he has you. And for those of you who are saying, well, God, if you really had me, why did you allow this person to abuse me? I did not deserve that. It could be that he took your innocence. It could be that he took your she, whoever took your money. It could be that they did something that's, you know, incomprehensible for you. Right? So I just wanted to let you guys know, I want you to go through, through the booklet and you can read page six and it has all of the scriptures on there, but I'm going to read one. 
okay, that I think is really important because when we think about our abusers and when we think about the things that we have gone through in that capacity, it can often bring up rage. You can feel intense rage. And then in turn, you may want to seek vengeance. So Romans 12, 19 says, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine and I will repay, says the Lord. So I think it's so important that you understand that. Because let me tell you, we're not over here talking about, we, we, we're not making no excuses for nobody that's abusing. Let me just be clear about that. I don't ever want you to get that twisted. It is very clear my stance on that. But this series is about you getting back to you. The abuser has already taken up enough space in your head, in your life, your relationships, your anointing, your calling, your purpose. Enough already with that joker. We sick of this person or the spirit in them. We don't have time for that. Today, though, we want to break off what they left. We want to break off what they intended to do. And their plan is going to fail. We have to break that part up. Okay? We have to break that part up. Now, now that you have a little information to start with, I have a list of things for you to exa examine to see what you possibly could be dealing with. And again, this will be very obvious because you can say, man, I never had anxiety any before in this area. You know, or I never experienced depression like this. And then that's why we want to open up that door and we want you to start praying and speaking to the Lord for yourself and saying, Lord, do I have a blind spot with this? Have any of these things come into my life after this happened and I have not been able to connect the dots? Now, we do know once abuse happens, there are some obvious breaches and obvious things we feel like devastation, hurt, disbelief. That's why I didn't list stuff like that, because those are the ones we know immediately we're going to feel. We know out the gate. Once we recognize the abuse happened, we know that there are just some obvious things we're going to start feeling right out the gate. So I wanted to talk about those hidden things. So now that you have some ideas of what of some stuff that can come up and again, really pay attention to the difference of self-esteem and self-worth and confidence. Not all the same thing. I want you to make sure you don't get caught up in that snare. Because if you start thinking, oh, I'm confident and I got it, you could miss the healing work that you need to do because maybe you don't got it the way you're thinking. You might. I'm not saying you don't. Everybody's different. You, this might not be something that affects you. But if, if, you feel a, if, if it comes up and you feel a point of contention, then that lets you know right there that that's not something that is healed in you and you got to get to it. Okay? So... I, we're on page seven and we, we're almost done, y'all. I want to read the prayer. So let's, no, yeah, yeah, we'll read the prayer. And then after we do the prayer, we do a declaration and I'll wrap up really quickly, okay? So we got about two, three minutes left. So here's the prayer for forgiveness of abuse. Lord, I cry out to you for deep healing. I come to you transparent from the depths of my soul. The unforgiveness that I've been harboring for my abuser has taken me places mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually that have made me question why you allowed this to happen to me. I have even wondered if you really loved me. Why would you allow this, Lord? Why did you let them do this to me? I have battled with anger, hatred, and disbelief concerning this, and I am tired. I want my life back. I want my soul renewed and I want everything back that was stolen as a result of this crushing experience. Kill every desire in me to seek vengeance. I now know that vengeance is yours and it is another tactic used to take me even further away from your perfect will for my life. I have been violated. I struggle because I deserve justice. I want retribution for breaking me and stealing my power and innocence. Today, I am on the journey of forgiveness. Father, I won't lie, lie and say that I'll pray this today and it'll all be gone. But I will keep crying out until you answer. I cannot erase the past, but I can create a new future with your help. I need you to show yourself strong. Lord, I want to be free. I curse and cut off at the root. The spirit that attacked me 
through this abusive experience. Lord, please hear my heart and let me operate in forgiveness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Play that back if you need to. Play that back if you need to. And I, I would like to give the last bit of encouragement concerning this space of the process of forgiving. Say this declaration, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that I am transformed by the renewing of my mind, body, and soul. I am healed. I am whole. My abuser no longer has control over my life. And here are a few thoughts on forgiveness that I, I want you to keep close to the vest. And I don't want you to forget as you go through this process. People hurt each other. It happens to everyone intentionally and unintentionally, regretfully or not. It's a part of what we do as people. But the beauty is that we have the ability to heal and forgive. And one of my favorites. The weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong. Think about that. It's hard to hear something like that because when you know you've been violated and you didn't deserve it, it's hard for you to think about something that way because there's no blame. You know, like what the scary part about abuse is you really didn't do anything wrong. It doesn't matter where you were, or what you did, or how you showed up. We know that when it comes to abuse, that's why that's why the word is what it is, is an abuser. You don't deserve it. They're doing something to violate you. You didn't ask for it. You certainly didn't ask for it, right? So that's where the 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 trigger comes in. Because when you think about these things, it can automatically try to make you feel like, well, this is not my fault. And they're victim shaming me and they're making me, they're trying to make me out to be a bad person. Not over here. We're not. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. We are the different. We are the opposite of that over here. It's just that if you find your strength, or I'm going to say if you could find your strength, if you could begin to find your strength in knowing that regardless of what they did to you, you might feel weak. But the experience was meant to give you the illusion of you being weak and you are not actually weak. And your strength is in taking your power back from that person or that situation. And you gain your strength by forgiving those who did the unthinkable to you. Again, we're not talking about them. We're talking about the acts that you need to do so that you can get yourself together based on a situation that you did not ask for and you did not deserve again, the lot in life that you are currently dealing with. It's, it's, it's tragic and it's hard. But we're trying to heal over here, right? A part of living your authentic purpose is taking the steps to healing. So please be encouraged. And please understand that the magnitude of what is being prepared in front of you and what is happening in in your life right now. And the fact that, you know, like we've been hearing that Esther 414, you know, such a time as this. If you have happened upon this video and you've downloaded this book and you are literally in the space of, you know, um, how can I say it? You're in the space of, of really trying to look at this head on because you know God has more Then kudos to you. And you should rejoice because this space and this place was made for you. Now, I'm about to say something extremely odd. It's going to come off really odd to some people, but I'm going to say it because I want to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. And I tell you all all the time, if you follow me, I am not with that foolishness. I'm going to say what God needs me to say. And I know sometimes I can sound a little kooky and crazy. But prophetic words and, 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 and words that the Lord wants us to often share, even words of knowledge and words of wisdom, they're not always something that sounds like, oh, yeah, you're going to get a million dollars. You're going to get a husband tomorrow. You're going to get a wife. No, you know, they don't always sound like that. It's just not. It's just not the truth. It's not. And if if you listen to somebody's prophesying like that every time, that's 
I'm telling you, you might not want to hear me saying it. That's a red flag. You got to be careful of everything they say, shiny and pretty. Eh, no, you know, and I'm not saying it has to be bad either. I'm not saying that either. And you may encounter somebody who genuinely just has good words over your life. But I think at this point, if you haven't, you have to start to learn and discern because there are going to be some people that God, for some of you, you may have in your life that God has called to be in your life. And you are, you are, you are a prophetic encourager. You don't really get bad words about them, but they literally represent something in your life that, you know, is, is from God and they're there to help you and, and carry you through. But this is what I need to say. I do feel like there may be some people that I might personally know listening, or I don't know why you're making me say this, but I'm not going to be playing and get in no trouble because I'm not saying it. Listen, you might listen to me and I can't see you listening to me and that's okay. Right. I'm, it's fine. I get it. And for whatever reason, whatever your reasoning is, you don't even want me to know. And I'm fine with that. I totally respect that. But even if you got to make a fake email address, make a, fee, a fake email address, put a fake name on it. I don't care. But please get the ebook. Don't just listen to what I'm saying. You need the whole ebook. Listen, I'm going to just say this too. If it's anybody I hurt that's listening to this and you holding a grudge and you're mad at me or I did something foul to you, I'm not perfect. I could have done that. I want to say I'm sorry to you. I'm sorry to you. I'm not a perfect person, but I'm learning a lot and I am trying to make personal changes. So we may never speak again while we're both alive on this earth, but just know if you're listening and you don't want me to know that you're listening, that's okay. But just know that I'm not the same person that I was even yesterday and I'm changing every day. So whether you forgive me or not, it's all good. I have forgiven myself and I've asked God to forgive me. And all I could ask is that if this is some stuff that you're hearing and it's helping you, uh, that's what I wanted to do. I, this is not about me. This is about how God is healing us all. We're all changing. We're all getting better. That is what this is about. And if I can't be transparent and I can't say, if I'm in a place where I can't say I did somebody wrong or I didn't handle this correctly because I've done tons of things absolutely wrong. Like if there, there are things that I know I've experienced and maybe some of you have experienced, they're so far away from who you are now. If if a new person heard about old things you've done, they'll be like, oh, I don't want to listen to her. Ugh. And I can't be mad at that either. But such is life, right? Because we still have to keep pursuing the things of God if that's what we're really trying to do. So, yes, I want to tell you that because there are times when God is trying to use a means or a way to get to us, and it may not be favorable to us for whatever whatever the reason is. It could be because maybe somebody don't want you to know you're listening, or I don't know. It could be a myriad of things, but just make up the email address and get the ebook. It's It's fine. I don't ever have to know. But the Holy Spirit just made me say that because the enemy just trying to get people in the chokehold however he can. This is the whole abusive spirit thing. Always trying to get people to get caught up in unforgiveness and, 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 un, and to be unhealed and to be unkept in the spirit realm because you just don't feel the love and the connection to God because this abuser violated you in some capacity. So I just needed to say that and be obedient. I know that was really weird and really unique, but Hey, it is what it is y'all. And we, we got to just try to figure out whatever that's going to look like for us, you know, whatever that's going to look like for us, we got to just keep working through it. And we got to keep being honest about who we are. So with that being said, this is a pretty long one. I know it was, we, we touched on some heavy stuff, but I do appreciate and love you guys for listening. And you know, you guys stay tuned. The next one we're talking about, it's a lot lighter. And I'm not going to lie, we shifting gears on these next three because this is really going to point the finger back at us. Today was really heavy about being violated and you being in a situation that you didn't deserve. But these next three, this is going to be that whole, you know that saying, the ones that point the finger, they got four fingers pointing back at them or three fingers pointing back at them. That's what this is because we really got to get past that so that we can get to our blessings. And again, I'm not even saying that these are even all our faults as well, but there's going to be heavy responsibility in these next ones. So probably need to say a trigger warning for those two, because it's, it's not going to, it's going to be like this in terms of being thorough, 
but the content is going to be way different. Okay. So make sure you like, you share, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. So you'll know every time one of these videos pop up, hit the link in the description and get your free ebook. It's also a free ebook on moving. And there's also a video, two videos on that. And if you have not, you can listen to yesterday's video about forgiving yourself. I appreciate you guys and thank you for continuously watching. I'm Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist, and I'm wired, wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose.